Hi, I'm Tyler London, Chief Analyst of Cabot Small Cap Confidential and Cabot Early Opportunities here with your Cabot Weekly Review. It is about 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Friday, June 21st, and not a new high for the market today, but we did hit another one earlier in the week, which I think brings us up to around 29 or 30 on the year. Uh, it was an interesting week with the holiday on Wednesday. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely enjoyed it. It was nice to have a midweek holiday. Kids were off at camp. My wife and I were able to take a little time, go to the beach, and when the market is closed, uh, it's much more relaxing uh, to take a bit of a day off. So that was nice. Uh, but here we are at it again. And, um, it, you know, some interest. It wasn't like a crazy week. Of course, like I said, with the holiday, news flow has been a little bit slow. Um, but uh, yesterday, the NASDAQ snapped a seven day winning streak. A lot of the AI uh, and tech and semiconductor names. We're a little bit on the uh, softer side of things. Today is triple witching day. We're going to have about five and a half trillion dollars worth of options expiring. Uh, so there should be there could be some interesting movements um, in some individual stocks. Some growth concerns popped up again this week because some of the data out of Europe and the U.S. a little bit on the you know slower side. So that's not great, but at the moment not a huge concern. We also had Fed speakers out this week. So Goolsby, Barkin, Kashkari, all basically reiterating the same thing, you know, being patient, watching the data, etc. But at least they weren't like overly hawkish. Uh, what else on the Fed? So some skepticism about whether or not the Fed would cut if the market continues to be as strong as it's been. JP Morgan threw a bucket of cold water on that concern out with some data saying that the Fed has cut rates with the S&P 500 within 2% of an all-time high 20 times over the last uh, 44 years, so since 1980. And each time that happened, the market was higher a year later with an average gain of about 14%. So of course, you know, it's not like hi history is gonna repeat every time, but uh, at least the data there, the high level data is, uh, isn't is saying Fed won't cut when the market is near all-time highs. Uh, what else do we have going on? So July seasonality, of course, we're not quite there yet. We have nine or 10 days here left in June. Um, but July has historically been extremely good for the market. Uh, in the first 15 days of July, those have been the best two week trading. Um, that's been the best two week trading period of the year since 1928. Uh, S&P has also been up in July for the last nine years with an average return of 3.6%. Whereas the NASDAQ has been up over the last 16 Julys with an average return of 4.6%. And small caps have been up in seven of the eight uh, last Julys with an average gain uh, in the mid 3% range as well. Um, all right, let's take a quick look at some of the other market indices. So the NASDAQ uh, actually just turned slightly positive, uh, barely, barely, fractionally positive for the day market. It's 11.06. Uh, let's see, small caps down today. It's kind of a messy chart. They've just been bouncing around between 1230 and 1350 since the beginning of the year. A lot of interesting and positive momentum in some individual small cap names, but at the index level, uh, given the big exposure to some you know weaker segments, um, not a lot going on there. Yields down over the last two weeks, uh, basically flat over the last two days, 4.25%. I saw that the 30-year mortgage rate hit a two-month low uh, yesterday. I think it's about 6.9%. Uh, so, you know, I wouldn't say that's too attractive, but it's nice that it's not going higher, I guess. Uh, okay, some consumer names here as we jump into stocks. So, Sprouts Farmers Market looking pretty good around its 25-day moving average line. Ticker symbol here is... SFM market cap of 7.7 .7 billion. We also have uh, Kava Group continues to look good, CAVA. I know Mike has talked about this one and I think I have too. Uh, and then last on the consumer front is Crocs. A little bit of a dip, um, but still looking pretty good. Of course, you know, a new high yesterday, even though it gave it up. Um, still, still pretty good looking chart. Uh, a couple of commodities names. Uh, 
Oil, of course, a little bit weaker up until a few days ago, but strengthening more recently. And Morgan Stanley was out with a note this morning upgrading some commodity names, including Alcoa. So maybe there's a little bit of a rally uh, that could come here. We also have Freeport MacMoran looking to make a move. And then Flowserve is a uh, energy related name, market cap of 6.3 billion, which, you know, looks like it could make another move, kind of a normal looking pullback. All right, moving on to technology. So it's been interesting to watch the divergence between the tech, the semis, the infrastructure names, and cloud software. Definitely high level. Seems as though companies uh, are prioritizing investments in the infrastructure and holding off on big uh, software investments, probably because, probably because you know, AI is the new thing and it doesn't make a ton of sense to make big software investments uh, when everything really is changing. There's a lot of software out there that's reliable, that does the trick that companies are familiar with and that just works. So sticking with that seems to be the, uh, the operating mode of the day, whereas looking for new investments in AI and prioritizing that. And so what we see is ETFs like VanX Semiconductor, this is the SMH, you know, hitting new highs, definitely looking a little bit extended, uh, but you contrast that with some of the cloud software ETFs like WCLD, uh, which obviously looks beaten down right now. And if we look at some individual software names, you know, it's the same thing. So Salesforce down and out. Uh, what is this? Workday not looking so good, although maybe a little bit of a bounce taking shape here. It's going to be interesting to see when these names can gather some momentum because they do seem very, very oversold. Um, but I would keep an eye on the WCLD uh, and the CLOU ETFs sort of as like a way to gauge uh, a potential software rebound. Uh, also HubSpot, not doing that much down by its 200 day moving average line. So switching over to some of the tech infrastructure names and i'm using that as a very very you know broad based generic term whether we're talking about data centers or switches or servers or um, you know optical equipment providers or contract manufacturers all that kind of stuff i'm just lumping into tech ai infrastructure um, dell has definitely been attracting some attention down over the last two days um, but was kind of recovering from that significant after earnings pullback uh, from the end of May. Also HP, HPQ, um, looking pretty strong. And Hewlett Packard Enterprise, HPE, uh, they had their HPE Discover event earlier in the week, which there was some pretty, you know, pretty decent, um, pretty decent responses to, but it hasn't helped over the last two days. Logitech International uh, emerging as some analyst pri uh, favorite stock for uh, AI related computer peripheral equipment, um, mouses, uh, cameras, etc. Corning, of course, they make uh, a lot of different things, but one of the big things is glass for um, for devices, and that stock has also been gathering momentum with a lot of notes on it over the last couple of weeks. Nova Measuring is a semiconductor capital equipment uh, provider. So for, as you would expect, measuring devices. Um, mid cap name, small cap for some of you that think 6.6 .6 billion is a small cap. Um, I think that's getting into mid cap territory though. And that definitely looks like an extended chart, uh, but Nova is pretty strong and the story looks pretty good for the next couple of years. Arista Networks, Everybody knows this one. Uh, Applied Materials, of course, another semiconductor company. And Arm Holdings. So last for this week, uh, Apple. Of course, we all know Apple. Um, a little bit of an old story because the WCLD was two weeks ago. Um, but the big news, of course, with Apple is that they're getting into the AI game uh, officially with a partnership with OpenAI to bring ChatGBT to Siri and a number of other applications. So these, it's gonna be, it's gonna require an operating system upgrade, which I think is gonna happen in September timeframe. 
It's only gonna work on iPhone 15 Pro and Max, so the latest generation of iPhones, as well as iPads and Macs with the M1 chips or better. So again, the more recent um, hardware. It'll remain to be seen how well those devices will work with this or whether you know hardware needs to be updated again. But really what is being uh, discussed here is you know, the upgrade cycle for Apple's devices. So the last one, the 5G upgrade cycle, I think it was 2019 to 2022. Uh, revenue was up for, I think this was for the iPhone, 44% over that period. So if we look at it this time, maybe between 2024 to 2026 or 2027, you know, a two or three year upgrade cycle, what could that mean for iPhone, for iPhone sales? You know, could it be, 25% could it be 45% because of what Apple is doing with AI you know who knows but um, average upgrade cycle for current iPhone users hovers around 17% so it'll be very interesting to watch uh, if this new hardware uh, that's coming out in the iPhone 16 which will be later um, but the AI tools that Apple is going to release this September if that'll help get people in the door so Keep an eye on Apple. Um, there's a lot of talk about how much more revenue could fall to Apple's bottom line uh, than could for other companies that are making hardware for AI um, just because of Apple's strategy and what they're doing, which is too much to get into right now, but keep an eye on Apple. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Next week on Thursday, presidential debate. That'll be a lot of, there'll be a lot of talk around that. Um, so keep an eye on that and uh, have a nice weekend and we'll be back in touch next week. Take care.